I was watching back on our footage from fight week and I caught up you over the ring screaming soft into that crowd again. Is it all sunk in what you achieved? Yeah, it was, um, it was a very almost borderline surreal kind of moment really. It felt really, it felt really special, that fight at least. And it was, a, it was a crazy week and a crazy event and topped it off really nicely with the win and the finish. Looking back, have you got even more respect or understanding for how you held it all together out there, Fab? Because I had an inkling of what had gone on and was stunned by how cool and calm you were out there. Uh, well, I think maybe a few a few more other people might do. I always knew <laughs> I always knew what I was going through in that camp and what the things you had to kind of bypass to make it through on the night and get there. But it's, it's nice to be able to then afterwards go and share that out and just say, look, look, I got the win and did everything. I acted as I should and whatever, but all this was going on behind the scenes. But ultimately, I'm, I'm there to do a job and I'm not going to let silly things like that distract me. Yeah, you refuse to make a song and dance about it. I believe there might be a hearing with the board at the start of December. Have you got any idea of how you think it should be handled? That's up for the board. It's not me to tell them how to do their jobs. Um, there's, <laughs> I think there's enough evidence for them to work with very plainly for them to see and, and deal with the circumstance from there. Um, so for them to for them to take that on and, and manage it as they should, that's, that's their role. That's not for me to tell them. On to happier things. You had a couple of guys ringside trying to fight you, Solly Dakers and, and Fraser Clark. Uh, have you started talks about any of that sort of stuff yet or are you still enjoying the holiday and, and, and what you did out there already? <laughs> yeah, just um, I'm only recently back from a little holiday and having a bit of time off. So conversations will start this week, next week and things. And we'll, we'll have a look at the landscape, see what options we feel like are best for me and what we want to do next. And we'll, we'll go from there. But I've probably got maybe one more fight at British level. One more I'll tick off and then I think then it's time for me to move on. Can I ask you a little bit about today? Um, we had a good interview with Anthony Joshua before this fight happened. We understand he's training with Ben Davison, who you work with now, just ticking over and staying warm. But he wouldn't make any comment now on if he was using Derek James, if he would be flying over. We understand that he won't be working with Derek James. To take this fight, a six foot four, six foot five southpaw, on five weeks' notice for a guy who doesn't like southpaws, without his trainer, that seems worrying to me as an AJ super fan. Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. He he obviously has experience with with Southpaws, with the, the Usyk fights and the camps and stuff. So there's a lot there. So he, he obviously feels confident in himself, which is actually quite good to see from him. Um, that he's willing to, to do this and be like, no, 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 don't worry, I can I can do this, it's fine. It is it can be a bit worrying that he maybe has got not got a a solid or stable trainer or at least or maybe he does and he's not commenting about it one way or the other but um i don't think it's that much of a worry i think um as long as him as a fighter is confident in himself and like i say he's got the previous experience with southpaw so it's not like it's anything completely new that's still relatively fresh in his memory so he can still draw back on those things if needs be can i ask you about the the, the fury fight that happened i mean it was bizarre it was your night your card but in a, in a completely different stadium mm. I know that on Friday his S&C man Christian put out a couple of images, one from the launch presser September, start September, one from the Friday weigh-in, mm. and he said that he's lost 26 pounds in eight weeks. That is too much for a heavyweight to be losing in that space. I know he's a big man, I know he's not body beautiful, but that to me showed he couldn't have been training full time for 12 weeks. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's an obvious question mark around his I'm not going to say commitment, that's probably a bit of a stronger statement, but his, his, his thoughts on Nganu as an opponent and maybe potentially taking him lightly, maybe. I think that obviously he'll admit himself that the performance wasn't the best. Um, so maybe he did take it slightly lightly than, slightly more lightly than he would have, than he should have, but he, he still come through on the night. I still think he won. I, still, I think Nganu did very well and that almost not fluffed up but did really pump up the the look of it of oh actually you want that mixed with the knockdown as well obviously those two things really play on your head um but i still think he won but i, I think we had such a high expectation of what he was going to do to Nganu and uh, such a low expectation of how Nganu was going to come out we almost thought he was going to be some sort of stiff robot and just get dance circles around when actually he came out and was a very competent boxer and gave him a very good fight so there was a mix of a few different things but maybe he maybe he took it lightly and if so hopefully he's learned from that. The first time I ever spoke to you was on the back of you going out and sparring Alexander Usyk and you've just been on the card with Tyson Fury where you've seen him in a 
tough fight with Francis Ngannou. Two total opposite ends of the spectrum. How do you think that fight goes now, Fabio? And, and I know it's difficult to ask that, but if we get a fit Fury, 19 and a half, 20 stone, music, you know, feeling good and looking good, how, how, how do you think it plays out? Yeah, it's, it, if anything, that's obviously, that's made it more interesting because the both of them now are coming off contentious wins of obviously U6 with Dabar and you saw some some people would say flaws there or some some areas of openings and then with with Furies as well that you saw that he wasn't completely switched on and found difficulties in certain areas now them as opponents compared to who they had them fights again are very different but there's still obvious parts there of where they could both maybe slip up or not not come with their A game but I think for each other it brings out a different when you know the fight means a lot more and when you know the opponent is of a different grade it makes you train different it makes you work for it different and I think especially coming off both of those performances as well they'll both have almost something to prove and a point to put on but in terms of in terms of who wins I'll I've always edged towards Usyk I always have um, it's probably an interesting one for people but I always have I'm, it, it doesn't mean that I don't think Fury can win because I wholeheartedly do I just think that Somehow, some way, I always find it very hard to bet against Usyk. He always seems to just be crafty enough, however, and, and find whatever or do whatever needs to be done to beat the opponent in front of him. And before I let you go, can I just get confirmation that you're now so big time that you only fight in Saudi Arabia <laughs> for millions and millions? <laughs> I don't know about all of that. I don't know about all of that. I'm more than happy to um, to come home and do some and do some shows back in England whenever they arise. But um, for the time being. While, while um, Riyadh season's on, I'm looking to take advantage of it.